he's aware, he's speaking with family, and he's he, he understands from whether it's social media outlets or, or just media outlets uh, that you know there's this perception that he was on the run, mm -hmm. that he was uh, trying to hide. That's absolutely not true. And again, the, the, the government here knew I what the plan that. was, and uh, so he's concerned, obviously, because I mean, certainly I don't deal in the court of public opinion, but my client does. Uh, and he's asked me to, uh, well, he asked me to, to gather you folks here to, to explain to you what, what our involvement has been, what his cooperation has been, and we're just trying to get him back and get this process rolling. I was contacted by Mr. Van Ellinger back uh, about two or three days after the warrant had been issued. Uh, I understand that these allegations occurred, uh, started back in March is when the accuser uh, went to the Boise police and they started their investigation. Uh, that began back in March. Uh, he obviously went through the uh, ethics committee hearings. Uh, my understanding is that report was completed on March 16th of 2021. Uh, and then at that point, the reports would have been sent to the Ada County Prosecutor's Office and they would have started done their investigation. They ultimately make the determination of whether or not charges are gonna be filed. Uh, we know that the warrant was issued on um, September 9th, uh, again, my contact with, with Aaron was just a couple days after that. Uh, I learned at that time that he was uh, not in Idaho. Uh, he was in Central America where he was on a vacation, pre-planned vacation. He actually left in May, uh, far in advance of this warrant being issued because nobody knows if a warrant's gonna be issued or not. And so uh, he learned of the warrant. Um, we talked about and it's important to remember that this warrant signed by Judge Kibido was a book and release warrant. There was no bond set. All he had to do was turn himself in, they take a photograph, they do his fingerprints, and then he's released and he's given a court date to come back um, or to, to get a court date uh, for the next proceeding, which would have been an arraignment. Uh, he had a pre-planned uh, return. Uh, I made contact with the lead detective in this case. That would have been about the 12th or 13th of September. I advised him that I was going to be representing Aaron in this case. I let him know of when his pre-planned trip back was. I gave him the date. Uh, he was scheduled to be back on the 24th. Uh, he had a hiccup uh, with a flight leaving Central America back to the United States. He missed a connection, but he made his way back and he was landed in Atlanta uh, on Saturday night. Uh, last Saturday night was taken off of the plane and taken into custody. Uh, we started making the calls because we knew it was a book and release warrant. He should have just been booked in and then typically when you're out of, when you're arrested on an out-of-state warrant, that's what triggers the idea that you're a fugitive. That's when you see the, the fugitive hold. It just means you're, you, you've been picked up in a different state. It doesn't mean that he's running. It doesn't mean that he's done anything. Again, the state knew, uh, the lead detective knew, when uh, he was going to return, and he was planned to turn himself in. Uh, he lives up in Lewiston, obviously. He was going to fly into Spokane, turn himself in in the county uh, there the next day. Would have gotten his court date. He is now in custody in the Clayton County uh, facility. Uh, we have spoken to the Clayton County Sheriff's Office. They have told us that all they need is a email from Ada County Warrants. It's called an AMS message. It just says, this is a book and release. You can release him and he can return to Idaho as he had originally planned. Uh, we made contact with Ada County Warrants. Um, they said, oh, we, we can't do that ourselves. We have to get that from the prosecutor's office. I made contact with the handling attorney for the Ada County Prosecutor's Office. Uh, just yesterday, she indicated that uh, they had tried to make contact with the Clayton County Prosecutor's Office to determine if there were any other holds on him, which we know there aren't. I gave her the uh, information for the the person in charge of warrants and extradition there in Clayton County. Uh, asked her please contact her, please just get um, get that message out. Uh, he has never, Aaron has never once shied away, but again, he was out of the country, far in advance of the warrant being issued, made contact with our office um, immediately upon learning there was a warrant. My contact with the uh, lead detective advised him 
uh, and the conversation was left at that. I did not anticipate, well, we did talk about that, you know, he could be picked up in, in a warrant because what happens is once, uh, even a book and release warrant, it goes to what they call the NCIC, and that, um, that triggers anybody in any state can be arrested on a warrant. He knew this could happen, but it, it, uh, again, he was always ready, willing, and able to comply with the warrant. It's just he had been there for some time, um, and once again, once he learned, made contact, and we tried to work through this. So we're hopeful that the Ada County prosecutor will just send the message they need to send to Clayton County, let him get released, let him get back on a plane, get back here to the Northwest, and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. The next step is he would be arraigned uh, here, and then he's given a date uh, for a probable cause hearing, which is a preliminary hearing. Uh, the state has two, two ways to get probable cause, either through a preliminary hearing or uh, take it to the grand jury. That's what the that's the state's province. Typically in these kinds of cases, they will take it to the grand jury. They don't want defense counsel typically to be able to question uh, the accuser uh, in these types of cases. So I anticipate there's going to be a, um, a grand jury indictment, but that's not my call. That's the state's call. So that's where we are. We're hopeful to get Aaron back as soon as possible. If, if they don't send the message to the Clayton County Sheriff to get the release, then the extradition process, uh, Idaho has 30 days uh, to, co to go and get him. And then depending on how they, um, it doesn't have to be in 30 days, that's the limit. If 30 days goes by and there hasn't, he hasn't been picked up, then Clayton County will let him go and he comes back. If they do pick him up, there's two ways they can do it. They can put him on a plane or they put him in a van and transport him across the country, stopping at every little town because they're picking people up and dropping people off. Obviously that's at a cost to the taxpayers. Again, uh, Aaron has all the plans ready to go to get on a plane once he's released. And we're hopeful that they will send that message that we will get Aaron back and we'll get this process moving. He is continuing to be and has been since my conversation with conversations with him about his, he's adamant that he's gonna fight these charges. Uh, certainly he's probably not in the best of spirits because he's in custody in, in, in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he's anxious to get back uh, and deal with this.